Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. I got a cool video where I'm getting to try some of the new Global Dry Sub. And so this already has sugar made into it. So let's get, just get that out of the way in the beginning. If you're wanting to actually set this out and feed dry sub to your bees, this is not the best product for that because it already has the sugar with it, but it's ready to go just add water. And I've been a big fan of the Global Patties, especially with the Apis Biologics product in it which we get a semi load of those at the Bee Expo. And so we're gonna be doing that again this year and more in what's gonna be now called the Feed Depot. So it's gonna be huge and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So this has already got sugar. It's got the Apis Biologics. It's got the proteins and the fats and all that stuff. This is a really high tech, high level pollen patty if you're really wanting to target making more brood food. So. We're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna add some water today, mix it up and see what the consistency is like. And uh, let's just see what happens. So the instructions come with it. Basically to sum it up, 2.2 pounds of this global patty powder and 260 milliliters of water using room temperature water. Now this right here, it comes with it, has like a list of ingredients and stuff like that. We're not mixing 2.2 pounds because these hives that we're fixing to get into, they're going to probably get a pound and a half a piece. It's August. It's awesome weather. It's like, it's Yankee weather right now. It is, well, it's like 78 degrees in August and it got down to like 58. This is amazing. So we're taking advantage of this weather and feeding bees, getting them prepped for this fall flow as the ragweed, ironweed, goldenrod, and wingstem and asters start to contribute. And hopefully we have some good weather for that. So, this, is, this part isn't too hard. We got a five gallon bucket and we're just gonna let it have it all. Maybe. <laughs> that filled the bucket up a lot more than I thought it would. I think it'll be all right. So one of the things that I like about this is the fact that if it works, I don't have to buy any syrup or do anything on the side just add water and rock and roll but if you're shipping this you're paying for sugar too so that is one of the con that right out of the gate i'm thinking of you know you are paying for convenience but you are paying shipping for sugar now they can probably get sugar cheaper than you can so you have to just do the math on that see how that works out for you all right we're just going to start with one quart here i'm going to need to add four of these or close to it and with this what I found with all the pollen patty recipes that I've used, doesn't matter if it's global, ultra B, anything that I'm mixing myself, there's a difference. Um, even sometimes from year to year using different water sources, you know, using a water softener versus using heavy well water or something like that. So I really want to be careful adding the last bit of water to it and take it easy because I'd rather it be a little too thick than a little too thin. I'm gonna go ahead and add a, I know I'm gonna need more water, so we're just gonna go ahead and add it now. Chug a lug, chug a lug. Thirsty, aren't you? All right, should be more water than that. But we'll just start off there. And they say to do it like this in the instructions to put the water on top of it, probably for mixing reasons. I'm just doing what they say. So we'll, if, it's, uh, if this is an epic disaster, I'll just call global. <laughs> just kidding. There we go. Starting to get it a little mixed up. Mm, these bees are going to like me. We're going to switch it to low gear.
There we go, starting to get nice and patty like. Yeah. Ah, yum. Jimmy used to eat this kind of stuff. So obviously that needs mixed in more that's still a little bit soft and uh, needs mixed quite a bit, but we're starting to get there. And this right here, you can see a little bit of sugar in there and it probably would be best if it sat a little bit as well. Oops, I don't wanna get the drill all messy. We're gonna cut it here and I'll show you once we've done a lot more drilling, it's just gonna be annoying. All right, I think that's got it right there. Might be a very thin layer on the bottom. It took a little bit of drilling. You can make this with a KitchenAid mixer and that'd be a lot easier, especially for doing small quantities, but we're going to be feeding probably a pound and a half per hive in this yard. And we've got about 20 in this overflow yard. Got to get some syrup on them and a little bit of pollen patty. They are bringing in some ragweed pollen. Ooh, I like that. I haven't touched it yet. So the consistency is good. Yeah, it's actually really good. It'd be probably best, especially if you don't have small hive beetles, to take two pieces of parchment or wax paper and put it in between. But we don't have that and the consistency is really good for us. We, we have a lot of small hive beetles. We do have traps on them and that's helping quite a bit. I've been liking these newer traps We've been using them a lot, but the consistency is great. This isn't going to be dripping between the top bars. This is really a great consistency because it's soft enough that the bees will eat it quickly. And we'll see how the bees eat it quickly. If, if they like it, they'll eat it quickly. I imagine based off of what my experience with Global, they will eat this quickly. They really do like the Apis Biologics. And I'm gonna leave a link down below for that as well because some people like to do their own patties and mix the Apis into it it really gets a lot of the little stuff that the big pollen patties miss. It's just, it's a lot of fine little things that bees need. And it's based 100% off of what are, what's in pollen, the little stuff. But this consistency is not gonna drip between our frames and down on our bees, but it's soft so the bees will consume it faster. And for small hive beetle country, this is great. And some people are like, well, I don't need to feed pollen patties. Well, great, some people don't. Some people have longer flows, more pollen, Heck, my bees up in Wisconsin, they've had just pollen and pollen and pollen. It's been beautiful to see. But in Tennessee, I haven't had good pollens in like two months. Nothing that's gonna get the bees to grow. If your bees are shrinking backwards as a whole, they're not getting enough nutrition. And typically, it's pollen related. They're holding back. Once those pollens come in, good healthy pollens, it doesn't have to be a variety. Sometimes it's like a good maple pollen, good alder pollen. The bees can brood up significantly just off of a lot of that one type of pollen. But just because pollens are coming in doesn't mean that they're great. Corn pollen is terrible. And sunflower pollen is semi-useful, but by itself really won't raise brood. So it just really depends. And it's hard to tell by just looking at the entrance. So we look at our bees and it's a lot easier when you have hundreds of hives to look over them, especially over multiple years and go, hmm, it kind of stinks keeping bees here in, in July and August in Tennessee. And then when you take them up to Wisconsin for the first time, like I did this year, and all of a sudden the, I look at the bees now in Wisconsin versus the ones here in Tennessee, I'm just like, that's it. That's it's really just as simple as the real stuff. But when you don't have the real stuff and you feel like you need a boost, that's what this is for. And it does make a difference. Usually one feeding, you don't really see a lot off of it. But after feeding it for about three consecutive times, you really start seeing some significant gains from it. And I've never been able to get that visible, uh, really visually be able to tell the difference between a dry sub and we're just letting the bees collect it versus a pollen patty in the hive. The pollen patties in the hives, I can really see a difference. The dry stuff, it's like, it just makes me feel good. But I never see it translate. And it's probably because my bees don't really take any this time of the year. You know, there'll be a hundred bees on it. That's not a lot for 240,000 bees or more. Let's see. Uh, it's been a long day. A million bees. That's a little more than 240,000. In a yard, not all of them are foragers, but going after this uh, dry sub, 
it, they should be mobbing it. If I have a bucket of dry and it's November, October, December, January, February, before the maple in February, I mean, you won't be able to see the bucket. There's so many bees on it. But as soon as that maple starts, they just ignore it. And right now there's a trickle of pollen coming in. And so they almost exclusively ignore the dry stuff. And so I can't get them to take it, even if it did help them. But they will eat this stuff up. Let's get to work. We'll see you in the next video with an update.